Welcome to a concept module on remote sensing imagery resolution. It's brought to you by the Geotech Center, a National Science Foundation grant to community colleges. It's based on geospatial technology co competency model, the GTCM tier four cross-cutting geospatial abilities and knowledge, and specifically on 4.1.4 remote sensing and photogrammetry. This uh, module will cover imagery resolution. At first, we're just going to compare the resolution when referring to digital photography versus remote sensing imagery. We'll briefly describe each of the different types of remote sensing uh, resolutions. And then we'll go into some specific details for all the spatial, spectral, radiometric, and temporal resolutions. First, a definition, and we're going to look at digital photography, if you've got a camera or your cell phone, you're going to probably be taking digital uh, photography. And generally, these are in three bands, RGB, red, green, and blue. And some of them actually have infrared, too. But the resolution is usually stated as the pixel count of the image. So how many pixels horizontally and how many pixels vertically. It's also by megapixel. My uh, cell phone camera tells me I've got, I think, 12 megapixels. Also, sometimes you'll see dots per inch PPI. Re resolutions, though, for remote sensing imagery is usually captured by multiple sensors, not just those in the visible range or even infrared. And it's stated as different resolutions. The four of them that are generally shown are spatial, spectral, temporal, and radiometric. This uh, concept model module will really focus on uh, imagery, remote sensing imagery. These are the four types of uh, remote sensing imagery resolutions that we're going to be looking at. The first one is spatial resolution. It's really the size of the area on the ground covered by one pixel or the size of the whole image footprint. Spectral resolution is the ability of that sensor to collect and record energy and in a very narrow wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum. Radiometric really is the resolution or the sensitivity of the sensor to look at and record very small differences in the admitted or reflected energy for each pixel. Temporal resolution is just how often is that imagery acquired for a specific location. We're going to go into each one individually. First, a little review of what uh, remote sensing imagery looks like when you bring it in. It's quite different than most images. Uh, the, uh, each pixel for each band is displayed using a grayscale with a brightness value called its digital number. And it's uh, scaled from black, white to black based on the energy detected by a sensor. And here you can see there's multiple sensors and multiple raster data sets. When you download the uh, data, it comes in and you have to unzip it twice. This is Landsat as an example, and it is a quite large uh, data set. But if we wanna look at just one of the rasters and what it looks like, here's that grayscale raster for one layer for one band. So, uh, quite different than what you'd see with your uh, normal camera lens. Looking a little closer, you can look at brightness and energy levels, digital numbers for a single band. And here we have Landsat 8 band 4. And as we zoom in, we can see more and more details. So you can see the one red square on the upper left zooms in on the upper right. It looks like a building. It's quite rectangular. But if we continue to zoom in, we can look at the pixels, and these are 30 by 30 meter pixels. And if we look at the data versus its grayscale, we can see its digital number. The higher the number, the more energy that is uh, given. In order to visualize those uh, data sets, we take three of them and color them telling the computer to display each of the different bands, either in the red, green, or blue on its color gun and monitor, and create a composite image. On the right here, we have three bands that have, are creating a natural color, 
a uh, false color and a pseudo color image. For spatial resolution, it's the fineness of the detail visible in an image. And on the left, we can see that that half meter by half meter pixel gives us a pretty detailed picture of what we can see. As we go bigger and bigger for 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 40, and up to 80 meters, we can see that what we can really identify as objects on the ground becomes harder and harder to see. So from those high resolution image, uh, spatial resolution to low resolution. And on the lower right, it's like a little graphic that sort of compares the pixel area for a half meter to all the way up to an 80 meter pixel. Here's another example of spatial resolution. Uh, on the left, that 71 meter square polygon, maybe it's a pond, but we don't know. If we put it into a raster grid that's one meter cell, it still looks pretty much like a shape like a pond. But as you can see, as we go to two meter cells or a four meter cell, pretty soon it's almost impossible to identify exactly what it is. So smaller scale cell size, size is very good. It helps you identify the feature and gives you better spatial accuracy, but it may be slower display, slower processing, and it may create a very large file size. The larger cell size um, with very low, much lower resolution, uh, you really get lower feature spatial accuracy. Now it may display faster and process faster and have a smaller cell size. So you really have to look at your application and see exactly what you want to see in your image and decide on what spatial resolution you really need. Here's just another example. Um, you can really see this is the Why Not Bay in Massachusetts. And on the left with one meter resolution, you can pretty well tell that it's a coast. It's got bays, it's got rivers, houses, and other things, even though it's in false color. When we get to 10 meter, we can still make those out, but they're very blocky. And by 30 meter, it would be very hard to visually interpret it. So high spatial resolution in comparing the area of the footprint of your um, image. So high spatial resolution, generally they're pretty small footprints, meter to submeter pixel size, but very small objects can be identified. It's also a very small area that's usually within that footprint. Moderate spatial resolution, we've been looking at Landsat, 30 meter pixels. It gets harder and harder to really see what you're uh, visualizing just by looking at it. Uh, everything under 30 meters, uh, you really can't identify. Low spatial resolution, one kilometer or larger pixels, and I'll show you another on MODIS. But anything object smaller than one uh, kilometer is not observable and it has generally a very large footprint. Now each of the different ones are useful for different things. Spectral resolution, it really says what part of the electromagnetic spectrum can be captured by a specific sensor. So it's defining those intervals and the wavelength. And uh, LiDAR, for instance, can capture within the 600 to 9,000 nanometers some of which are in the visible and some are in infrared. Multispectral then, remember we have lots of bands that are very narrow between the 450 and the 2300 nanometers. Again, some in the visible and some in the infrared. So the width of the specific EM bands to which a sensor is sensitive is a spectral resolution. So for multispectral, such as Landsat, there are few bands, eight, 10 bands, relatively broader bands. When you get to your hyperspectral, there are many, many more, but they're generally much narrower. Radiometric re resolution is the sensitivity of a sensor to differentiate, uh, differentiate energy differences. So a sensor with low radiometric res resolution detects only large energy differences. One with a high radiometric resolution can detect small energy differences. Um, the resolution is defined by the range of values for each pixel that each pixel can detect and store, and it's often called its bit depth. So 8-bit or 2 to the 8th 
have values that range from 0 to 255 divisions, it's relatively low radi radiometric resolution. 16-bit or 2 to the 16, there are possibly 1, 0 to 665,536 60, divisions, although generally they, they don't use quite that many, but it is very high radiometric resolution. So Landsat 7 had a 2 to the 8 or 8-bit. Landsat 8 is 2 to the 16th. And so even though it's the same uh, meter square, 30 meter squares, you can see a lot more. Here's an example of that, uh, the greater the values at the versus that 8-bit or 16-bit. On the left is the 8-bit, on the right is the 16-bit. Even though the spatial resolution was the same, 30 meters, you can see a lot more detail because each of the uh, pixels have a lot larger range of values in gray. Another technique is to combine spatial resolution data with higher spectral resolution data, and it's called pan sharpening. This happens to be a quick bird, 50 centimeter pan chromatic, and a two meter multispectral. So each one separately is oh, pretty good, but combining the two gives you a very good uh, view of that image area. Temporal resolution is just how often that data is collected in the same location. So is it only once? Say it's a flight over an aerial one. Is it daily or multiple times a day? Is it frequently so ever so many every days? Revisit time examples. One of them is Landsat. It's once every 16 days. Sentinel-2, the European uh, satellite, is every five days. And MODIS, that moderate resolution image spectroradiometric repeat times is one to two fit days. Many other sensor platforms that have different temporal resolutions. And think about a drone. It really can be flown multiple times in one day, or it may be flown once and never again. So again, very varies greatly. Generally, if you're talking about a, a satellite in an orbit, uh, Landsat is a good example of that. It has a, it flies over the orbits and is collecting in the daylight part of the Earth. It has a 185 kilometer swath that it flies, and it flies a complete resolution. So every part of the Earth is covered every 16 days. One thing, um, not every part of the Earth is captured though. Um, within the United States, most data is saved and captured. Uh, in other parts of the world, especially over the oceans, that data is not captured and saved. Here's some additional resources for this concept module. There are some I Get Remote Sensing YouTube videos. There's also a good resource from Natural Resource Canada. They have a tutorial on remote sensing. And the Geotech Center itself has a remote sensing uh, model course. The center also has additional concept modules, and we're working on creating quizzes for these so you can earn a micro-credential or a badge. Um, take a look at the Geotech Center webpage. Thank you.